Hello, welcome to part 4 of 100 orthopedic MCQ series. Now let's move to question number 61. The majority of patients presenting with shock following a major injury will be suffering from Option A. Hypovolumetric shock Option B. Septic shock Option C. Neurogenic shock Option D. Anaphylactic shock And the answer is Option A. Hypovolemic shock Now let's move to question number 62 Isolated tear of MCL Option A. The knee is unstable in full extension Option B. Usually heal well enough to permit near normal function Option C. Operative repair is necessary Option D. Arthroscopy should be attempted And the answer is Option B. Usually heal well enough to permit near normal function now let's move to question number 63. The incidence of non-union in clavicle is higher in Option A. Displaced middle third of the fracture Option B. Commuted middle third fracture Option C. Lateral part fracture Option D. Medial part of the fracture And the answer is Option C. Lateral part of the fracture Now let's move to question number 64. Locking of the knee that is, the sudden inability to extend the knee fully suggests Option A. Anterior horn tear Option B. Posterior horn tear Option C. Horizontal tear Option D. Bucket handle tear And the answer is Option D. Bucket handle tear Now let's move to question number 65 Operative treatment of meniscus injury Option A. Indicated if the joint is locked Option B. Indicated if the symptoms are acute Option C, tear close to periphery, treated by meniscectomy. Option D, total meniscectomy, though to cause more instability and so predisposed to late secondary osteoarthritis. And the answer is Option D, total meniscectomy, though to cause more instability and so predisposed to late secondary osteoarthritis. Now let's move to question number 66. The indication of urgent surgical treatment in recurrent dislocation of patella. Option A. Tear of the medial capsule. Option B. Multiple dislocation in knee flexion. Option C. Presence of large displaced osteochondral fracture. Option D. Recurrent dislocation of patella with severe pain. And the answer is. Option C. Presence of large displaced osteochondral fracture. Now let's move to question number 67. The common knee joint disorders that cause anterior knee pain Option A. Patellar instability Option B. Patellofemoral overload Option C. Patellar ligament strain Option D. Plica syndrome And the answer is Option C. Patellar ligament strain Now let's move to question number 68 Forward subluxation of lateral tibial condyle is prevented by Option A. Lateral collateral ligament Option B. Posterior lateral capsule Option C. Posterior cruciate ligament Option D. Anterior cruciate ligament And the answer is Option D. Anterior cruciate ligament Now let's move to question number 69 Backward subluxation of the tibia is prevented by Option A. The anterior cruciate ligament Option B. The posterior cruciate ligament Option C. The posterior cruciate ligament with the accurate ligament and the posterior oblique ligament. Option D. Anterior cruciate ligament and the medial collateral ligament. And the answer is Option C. The posterior cruciate ligament with the accurate ligament and the posterior oblique ligament. Now let's move to question number 70. Have a toe characterized by Option A. Hyperextension of the MTP joint and flexion of both IP joint. Option B. Acute flexion of the deformity of proximal IP joint only and hyperextension of MTP joint. Option C. Flexion of distal IP joint and extension of proximal IP joint. Option D. The MTP joint is dislocated and the little toe sits on the dorsum of the metatarsal head. And the answer is. Option B. Acute flexion deformity of proximal IP joint only and hyperextension of the MTP joint. Now let's move to question number 71. Insufficiency fracture in diabetic foot should be treated. Option A. By prolonged cast. Option B. Without immobilization. 
option C by internal fixation option D by internal fixation with bond cement and the answer is option B without immobilization now let's move to question number 72 fracture of the pelvis option A can result in devastating retroperitoneal hemorrhage option B bleeding cannot be reduced by compressing the pelvis to appropriate the bleeding fracture sites Option C, compression to reduce hemorrhage cannot achieved manually with a towel or blanket. Option D, compression by external fixation of pelvis is useless. And the answer is... Option D, compression by external fixation of pelvis is useless. Now let's move to question number 73. The common nerve injury in Motangia fracture dislocation. Option A, median nerve. Option B, radial nerve. Option C, alnar nerve. Option D, posterior incrocious nerve. And the answer is... Option D, posterior incrocious nerve. Now let's move to question number 74. The early sign of compartment in upper limb. Option A, pallor of fingers. Option B, painful dorsiflexion of fingers. Option C, anesthesia. Option D, pulselessness. And the answer is... Option B, painful dorsiflexion of fingers. Now let's move to question number 75. Early treatment of myositis ossificans. Option A, muscle stretching exercises. Option B, splintage in the position of rest followed by active exercise. Option C, splintage in position of function followed by active exercise. Option D, manipulation under anesthesia followed by passive exercise. And the answer is... Option C, splintage in position of function followed by active exercise. Now let's move to question number 76. Displaced lateral third fracture of clavicle. Option A, are stable injuries. Option B, have a lower than usual rate of non-union if treated non-operatively. Option C, surgery to stabilize the fracture is rarely recommended. Option D, operation for this fracture have a high complication rate. And answer is... Option D, operation for this fracture have a high complication rate. Now let's move to question number 77. After lifting something heavy from ground, a patient complains of back pain, which is radiating to lateral leg and great toe of the lower limb. Most probable diagnosis would be Option E, L5 S1 disc product. Option B, L4 L5 disc prolapse. Option C, L3 L4 disc prolapse. Option D, L5 fracture. And the answer is Option B, L4, L5 disc prolapse. Now let's move to question number 78. The fat pad sign of the elbow. Option A, is seen most clearly in the anterior posterior view. Option B, seen in displaced supracondylar fracture. Option C, is diagnostic of undisplaced supracondylar fracture. Option D, arose suspicion undisplaced supracondylar fracture. And answer is... Option D, a row suspicion and display supracontract fracture. Now let's move to question number 79. The common cause of primary OA in hip is Option A, avascular necrosis. Option B, subluxation of the hip. Option C, displacement of the hip. Option D, femoroastabular impingement. And the answer is Option D, femoroastabular impingement. Now let's move to question number 80. Total hip arthroplasty for rheumatoid arthritis. Option A. Relieve pain but not restore the usual range of movement. Option B. It advocated for old patient only. Option C. Fracture during the operation is rare. Option D. Adolescent with juvenile or rheumatoid arthritis may be treated by custom-made processes. And the answer is... Option D, adolescent with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis may be treated by custom-made processes. So that's all for today. If you have any kind of doubts and clarification, please mention in the comment box. I think you have learned something valuable today. See you in the next session. That's part 5. Thank you. Bye-bye.